Armando Hasurigan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the farming group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurigan, please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks, or send them to me, and you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. Now, in the previous video, we looked at the activation of the naive T cells, such as the naive CD8 cell becoming a T killer cell, and the naive CD4 cell becoming different types of T helper cells. T helper cells has another important role in that it also activates B cells within the germinal center, the B cells who, which have already recognized the antigen. So in this video, we're going to concentrate on B cell activation and differentiation. So in the lymph node, the, the germinal center, the B cells um, mature and proliferate and also differentiate. So if we have the B cell here, if it is activated and, and it's finally differentiated, it will become either a plasma cell or a memory B cell, typically. The plasma cell is the secreting antibody cell. So going back to this diagram, we have the B cell becoming memory cells and the plasma cells here. Now, the T killer and all the other types of T cells, including the T helper and also the plasma cells, will travel out of the lymph node via the efferent um, lymphatic vessel from the lymph node. And then these T cells and plasma cells will travel through, through the lymphatic uh, circulation and the T cells will then migrate to the tissue where the site of infection, infiltration, inflammation is. Plasma cells can also migrate to the tissue where it will begin secreting antibodies to help um, enhance or promote the innate immune response. However, these plasma cells which move into the tissues are typically the short-lived plasma cells, right? The long-lived plasma cells, which, uh, which we are going to concentrate on, will move into the bone marrow. They will migrate into the bone marrow. And there they will secrete the antibodies, specific antibodies, into the bloodstream or the, lymph or the lymphatic circulation. These antibodies will then travel around the body and typically enter the site of inflammation in infection and uh, promote the immune response to destroy the pathogen. Hope you understood that. That was an overall picture. Now let's look at the big immunology map again and look at the B cell activation in more detail. Here is where we last left off in the previous video where the T helper cell activates the B cell in the germinal center. Let's have a closer look at this process by zooming into the germinal center over here. So we zoom in. So here we have in orange the germinal center. The germinal center is divided into the dark zone and the light zone. The immature B cell, which has just taken in a pathogen and, and, and then expressed the antigen of the pathogen on an MHC, will be in the dark zone and it will wait for the T helper cell. The, and the T helper cell came from, if you remember, a naive T cell, which became activated itself through an antigen presenting cell such as a dendritic cell. So this naive T cell became a T helper. The T helper will then bind with the uh, B cell and secrete cytokines, which will then activate the B cell itself. Let's look at this process in a bit more detail. So here we have the T helper cell. It has a uh, CD4 co-receptor, a TCR, a T cell receptor, and also a CD40 ligand receptor. And then the B cell has an MHC class 2, which presents the antigen to the T helper cell, and also a CD40 receptor. The CD40 ligand of the T helper cell is important because it stimulates the B cell's proliferation and differentiation, as well as some cytokines which are secreted by the T helper cell, such as um, cytokines interleukin-4, interleukin-6, and interleukin-5, or interleukin-4, 5, 6. So let's go back to this germinal center here. So when this immature B cell became activated from the T helper cell, the immature B cell will begin to undergo what's called somatic hypermutation and also pro proliferate in the process. So all these uh, proliferated B immature B cells are called centroblasts in the dark zone. And they all have unique antibodies now because of somatic hypermutation. Now let's stop there and go to the light zone. In the light zone, it's important to know that we have special type of T helper cells as well, known as T helper uh, follicular cells. And also we have follicular dendritic cells. And they are in the light zone because they will essentially uh, proceed with the activation and maturation of the B cells, the centroblasts, you can say now. 
Okay, the centroblasts are in the dark zone, and they all have their unique antibodies. So they have to move into the light zone. They move into the light zone because they also express um, some proteins, such as CXCR4 and CXCR5, which are attracted to chemical signals coming from the light zone. And so they would move from the dark zone into the light zone because of this attraction. So just recapping, the B cells proliferate and undergo affinity mutation through somatic hypermutation. Uh, I wrote here maturation, that's not right, sorry. Um, and they also will begin expressing proteins such as CR CXCR4 and CXCR5, which are attracted to the chemokine coming from the light zone, in this case CXCL13. So the centroblasts will move from the dark zone to the light zone, and they will become a centrocyte in the light zone. Centroblasts can either have high affinity mutation or low affinity muta mutation. Now, if they had low affinity mu mutation, these now centrocytes, um, they cannot recognize the antigen anymore because they, their affinity for these antigens um, have decreased, and so they are not needed by the body, and so they die through apoptosis. However, if a centroblast moving into this light zone um, has a high affinity mu mutation, it means that this uh, centroblast, now centrocyte, has a higher affinity for these antigens, and so it can recognize it. And if it recognizes it, um, the T helper follicular cells within the light zone will then um, bind with this centrocyte and send signals to it, send cytokines to it, to cause it to undergo class switching, differentiation, and proliferation. So, the, uh, the high affinity B cells proliferate, and then they will class switch. The low affinity B cells will die through apoptosis. So this high affinity centrocyte um, can differentiate and class switch to uh, either a memory B cells, which typically have uh, immunoglobin G antibody, and the memory B cells, they form memories of, the, of that particular antigen. Alternatively, this centrocyte can uh, differentiate and class switch to plasma cells, which have different types of immunoglobin antibodies. And the plasma cell's role is to secrete antibodies. So what are antibodies? What do they do? Well, they do, well, they do three main things. Let's just recap. First of all, antibodies can neutralize a pathogen, basically preventing it from it preventing it to adhere to other types of cells. Antibodies also um, opsonizes a pathogen, which um, promotes phagocytosis basically, helps phagocytes engulf these pathogens more easily. Antibodies also activates the complement proteins, which uh, if you remember, complement proteins essentially help destroying and stimulating or promoting phagocytosis of the particular pathogen. Um, it helps destroy the pathogen by forming a what's called the membrane attack complex, which causes the pathogen, or bacteria in this case, to lice, to burst by itself. Now, we will not follow the memory B cell, but we will follow the plasma cell. This plasma cell is a long-lived plasma cell. So let's go back to the big picture here. So the immature B cell goes, uh, undergoes maturation into plasma cells, long-lived plasma cells, and these plasma cells will travel into the lymph vessel. So in this diagram here, as you can see, we have the long-lived plasma cells as well as these other activated T cells, the T killer and the T helper cells, leaving uh, the lymph node via the lymph vessel, via the efferent lymph vessel here. So, in, so traveling out of the lymph node via the efferent lymph vessel, we have plasma cells, we have T killer cells, and many type of T helper cells. And so these T help these T cells will travel to the site of inflammation, infection, infiltration. The plasma cells can also travel to the tissues. However, they usually travel to the bone marrow. And in the bone marrow, that is where they will secrete its antibodies. And that's for the next video. Thank you.